हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल होप यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट एट वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ योर लाइव्स द हिस्टोरिकल माइथोलॉजिकल फिक्शन जनरे हैज गेन पॉपुलैरिटी इन इंडिया इन लास्ट डेकेड विद अ लॉट ऑफ ब्रिलियंट बुक्स रिटेलिंग आवर वेल लव्ड लीजेंड्स सम ऑफ दिस स्टिक टू द एस्टैब्लिश्ड वर्जन्स ऑफ द एपिक्स बट provide insights and observations like devdutt patnayak while others reinterpret the epics with their own version of characters as well as timelines here at thinker views we have reviewed many such books one of the areas we have recently been exploring is the works around the lost civilization of sindhu saraswati mostly known as indus valley civilization there is no doubt about splendor of these sites but the script largely remains unsolved and hence we do not have much literature associated with it the handful of books that come to mind includes immortals of meluha by amish and also in historical fictions like trade winds to meluha by vasant dave on the feature film tv series front there is the ashutosh govarikar film mohan chodaro all three above mentioned works feature this civilization in different lights and recently we read successful entrepreneur come author vinith bajpai's trilogy set in the same ancient land with an imaginative twist on these people and their lives the trilogy comprises of harappa curse of the blood river pralay the great dilip kashi secret of the black temple we have had the trilogy in our kindle collection for a while and i had the chance to enjoy a few days in this world on behalf of tim thinker views and here are my thoughts on it let us take a look at the cover page of the book because being an entry point to the virtual world explored within a book cover plays quite a significant role in influencing purchase and or read decisions for the book as you can see the cover page of harappa curse of the blood river is attractive You can see lightning and thunder in the blue sky and the main elements of the story beneath it reflecting the title and the plot too of the book effectively the bottom segment of the cover page is in contrast to the upper one and you can see the phrase curse of the blood river there these contrast segments make the cover page more appealing Now let us take a bird's eye view of the book plot. The book covers the canvas of almost 3500 years featuring Harappa in 1700 BCE to modern day Kashi and the after effects of what happened in Harappa on the world from then to now. We meet Vidyut, a dynamic successful young man who gets a summons to visit Kashi. to meet his great grandfather dwarka shastri this legendary chief of the 1600 year old dev rakshasa mat has summoned with you because it is time time when an old prophecy is about to come true and time for with you to fully understand his heritage and accept his destiny that has waited for thousands of years Vidyut arrives in Kashi and starts to learn about this from Dwarka Shastri. The loyal clan of Dev Rakshasa Mat are excited to have their leader amidst them. Some of them include Purohit ji, Balwant, Sonu and Naina. Soon though the opposition moves to Kashi as well and Vidyut's life is threatened repeatedly. in this bustling metropolis of harappa the power of vivaswan pujari is shining like a sun revered as a fearsome warrior a great leader 
and the last devta on earth his quest for enlightenment is almost complete when the shaptarishi promise him that he will join them when his karma is fulfilled on this earth destiny has something else planned though and harappa receives its first shock in the form of an earthquake that leads to their mother river saraswati flooding a few villages and killing a few hundred people the reading of panchang by vivaswan pujari's friend chandradhar indicates that within a few weeks their civilization will end this is all sadly going to come true as unbeknownst to them chandradhar's beautiful wife priyambada has engaged black sorcerers from mesopotamia to blacken and extinguish the surya of harappa she also poisons the water sources of harappa to induce mass hysteria and madness her loyal army persecutes vivaswan pujari's family until his wife sanjana is dead and his son manu is on the run with grievous injuries shock loss grief and anger with unbearable pain means that harappa's most powerful son becomes its most powerful enemy burning with inhuman desire for pratishodh as he announces hear me one and all hear me you city of sinners i vivaswan pujari the surya will come back with devastating vengeance you ungrateful bestial people of harappa i devoted my entire life in the service of this metropolis and today you stone me like a rotten animal remember my words you cruel harappans my revenge will be as ruthless and as brutal as your collective conscience is today in a parallel track we also learn about the efforts of a european force to gain mastery over the keepers of the ancient secret the brutal killings of people of goa in the 16th century by european invaders and with the sacrifices from the shastri clan but the secret survives the british explorer looking at remains of the harappa and mohenjo daro however is not so lucky and is murdered by his own people all these threads must come together now as the prophecy our approaches the time is now for all these pieces to make their moves and the saga to continue now let me share my unbiased views and reviews for this book the book combines many elements of a good suspense thriller with an impressive collection of ideas and conspiracy theories and conspiracy theories a wide and complex world involving prominent and historically well known characters spanning over centuries and a quest for the burning secret that has been kept in dark for a few millennia with the writing style of the book that reveals only tiny pieces as it progresses with layers after layers of information while always hinting at a big conspiracy in the background will keep the thriller lovers interested with so many tracks the landscape keeps changing all the time and the reader has an enjoyable exercise of joining the dots on their hands as they read the book will remind you of the works of dan brown with its writing style its secret that is linked to ancient religions and mentions of vatican and so on one of the main attractions of the book are the protagonists whether it is the mighty vivaswan pujari or the dynamo vidyut they both live up to the author's description on them as devdas half human half god they both are excellent warriors proficient in knowledge of vedas practitioners of tantra and exemplary leaders 
But of course, when you create mighty characters, their fall is also mighty and have long term repercussions. Rest of the characters are there to support these two, and yet Somdat, Manu, and Dwarka Shastri will also leave their imprints on the reader. Both Devdas have a perfect partner in Sanjana and Damini, the love of their lives. The author gives us a good view in the metropolis of Harappa with its Vedic way of living, its great baths with gladiator-like fights, its inhuman dungeons that form Mrit Karavas, and the city's great dependence on river Saraswati, which is literally the source of life for them. While the popular version of history was created by British explorers in the early 20th century, the author has a different view on this civilization and it is worth thinking about. After all, there is a lot of unknown in archaeological expeditions at time and memories reduce a lot of evidence to dust. And the British desire to pollute our education system to induce inferiority amongst Indian nationals is quite well documented. This is the first book of the trilogy, gives us some clues to why all the knowledge of the lost civilization of Harappa is hazy. Harappan people lived in the Indus Valley region till a wave of united, horse-mounted, white-skinned and blue-eyed invaders from the west swept these lands. The absolute dominance of one race over another first needs the total submission of the ruled to the ruler. This becomes possible only when over generations the entire populace is made to believe that the rurals have the moral, historical and cultural right to be the sovereigns. In the modern day world, it is the descriptions of Kashi that lift up the pages of the book with a life of their own. For example, just an inch below its horrendous outer skin lie the most profound and the most spiritually powerful mysteries and philosophies man has ever known. It is quite like the universe in which we live, dark and cruel, on its outside material cast, yet calm and immortal in its inner realm. As you can see, this is a complex world and not wanting to give the secrets away, we'll share with you some quotes from the book. There is a hidden streak that God grants women, which has the power to change the world, whether that is for the better or for the worse, depends on the woman who yields that influence. Or the truth is never sold and marketed like lies are. The book revolves around the struggle of humans when it comes to goodness, morals, faith and religion. The blackest of depravity and the whitest of goodness both reside in the same heart, suppressed or bolstered at the behest of the soul. Dharma itself gets tarnished due to the vested interest of rugs who twist and misinterpret it in order to gain political or economic mileage. Religion is a great cleanser, but it is also vulnerable to the dirt it aims to clean. Scoundrels are not restricted to any one faith. They are born under every creed, every race. The author reminds us repeatedly that the human desires for power or the appearance of it lead to bloodshed in every generation. Every era would hear the shrieks of suffering millions, only to satisfy the insatiable hunger of one tyrant who wanted it all for himself. The author also creates the world before, of the time when humans were more in tune with the nature, when the representatives of the nature's power and bounty were part of the human world. 
the mighty saptarishi were not ordinary sages no one knew from where or when they arrived on the planet no one knew what the purpose of their existence was no one had an idea from where they drew their boundless power this book is very enjoyable as it sets the stage for calamities to come and doom and gloom to follow with misery that will last for thousands of years with only a slight glimmer of hope at end and yet it is an entertaining tale of valor sacrifice and struggle of good versus evil no matter how potent and treacherous the forces of evil may be they can never defeat the power of love the supremacy of goodness there are a few typos in the book and we have mentioned those examples in our review article at thinkreviews.com in summary we can say that all in all it is a sweeping saga with secrets that will keep you reading to the end and move to the second book pronto thinker views rating would be 7.5 to 8 stars out of 10 so have you already read the book are you planning to read it what do you think about this book review do you find it helpful in deciding whether to go for the book or not please do share your genuine remarks via comments below if you have enjoyed listening to the review please hit the like button and do not forget to share it with your friends and other fellows whom you think such reviews interest more till we meet with our next podcast bye bye take care namaskar